Hi, it's Rob from Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Palanite subjugator from the Necromunda Dark Uprising box. Now they're great miniatures, loads and loads of detail on them. One thing I'm going to be doing is painting them up in a colour scheme which is based on the judges from Judge Dredd from the old comics. So let's crack on with that. So the first colour to use is Citadel Wire Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint up all the armour panels and his gloves, just like all the judges of old. Now there's a bit of a little comparison here. This is the subjugator stood next to one of the normal enforcers from Necromunda Dark Uprising, from the Enforcer pack. As you can tell, there's a lot more armour on the subjugator, a lot more chunky. So hopefully should be pretty decent in combat. So we're going to carry on painting all the green on the boots and the armour plates and his gloves and that. I'll come back with the next layer. Next colour we're going to use is Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to use this for parts of his shield and parts of his helmet. And also the main canister sections on each of the grenades. Basically being painted up like the big rounds of ammunition. So doing the front gold and then we'll use a little bit of lead belcher to do the very front of each grenade. I'm also going to do the shoulder pads with the gold thing to represent the shoulder pads that are gold on Dread and his pals. Now when we come back, we'll have all of the gold finished. Next up we're going to use a little tiny bit of Araman blue. That's just going to be to do his eye lenses. Now if you have a look at the gold on the shield there, I've done it in the parts of... as though it's kind of like an eagle. If you look at the old riot shields on Dread, they were a lot smaller, but they kind of had a big gold eagle on the front. So I've coloured this shield as though it's maybe the top of an eagle with the wings drooped down. I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. So it's just going to be painted gold like that. There's a bit of a hat tip. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of McCrag blue. I'm going to use this to do the visor, which is on the top of his helm, and also the windows on the shield. So it's going to be on the front and on the back of that little viewing pane. Next up, we're going to be using Vallejo Olive Drab. I'm going to be using this to do the grenades on the back of his shield and on his back, and also all of the straps that are holding on the armour plates on his boots, his arms, and around his body. Now, one of the great things I find about these miniatures is when you look at the Enforcer miniatures next to them, they're pretty much the same miniature, but the Subjugator has got all these extra plates strapped to him. So when you look at the Enforcer's legs, it's basically where the straps are if you take those straps off and the armour plates on the front you'd have exactly the same boots as the enforcers and it's a really really nice touch that they've done to them so you can see the majority of the base colours there the extra arm plates on them which are showing up under the main plates on the front underneath the kind of bottom of his tunic as it were his jacket they were ones that I didn't originally paint up because I didn't quite spot them there now we're going to move on to Citadel Avaland Sunset. And this is just going to be to do the Necromunda badge on the front of his shield and on the front of his chest. Although the rest of the miniature is being painted differently and more like Judge Dredd. I wanted to have the Necromunda badge on the shield on the front because I think it's a really cool badge. The way it's almost like an Aquila but almost like a skull as well. It's a really great symbol that so I wanted to do that as best I could. So we're keeping these badges exactly the same as they are on the standard miniatures paint job. Now we're going to add a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on red. And we're going to use this to just line parts of his helm. Now you'll see this better on the Enforcer video that I'll be doing in a few weeks. Where it has the outline of the front of the helm done in red like the judge's helmets. On this guy because he's got the respirator on the front. And he's also got a visor on the top. It does cover a lot of where the red is, so you've only got two little patches of red on this. We're also going to do 
the little square buttons red on the back of his shield. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher. This is to paint up the grenade, I presume it is, on the back of his belt here. And also the ends of the rounds in his grenade launcher. And if you want to, there is two tubes on his shoulders that you'll be able to paint up using this colour as well. Much like with my Chaos miniatures, I use Lead Belcher on Necromunda ones, generally. Just because it's a glum and dirty place, and I think Lead Belcher does a lot better than a nice shiny metal. Now we're going to start with the shades, and we're going to start with Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to be using that just to do around the edges of the two yellow Necromunda badges. That just grinds it up and makes him look a little bit dirty around the edges. If you're doing that on his chest and on his shield as well. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade. This is going to be to do the viewing pane on the front and the back of his shield, his eye lenses, and also his visor. One thing I will say is when you come to add some of the shade to his eye lenses, they are quite small and quite narrow. They will catch a lot of shade in there and darken them up. So when you put the shade in, just to use the very tip of your brush to kind of absorb a little bit of that extra shade to get rid of it so that you can still see the base colour below. Next we're going to use some Citadel BL Tan Green. We're going to be using that for all of his armour plates and all of the green areas. When I say the green areas, I don't mean the straps. We're going to be using Thonian camo shade to do the straps. So just all of the armour plates that we've done in war flesh and all of the pouches. Next up, we're going to be using a little bit of Thonian camo shade, and that is to do all the straps. So the straps on his front, the back of his legs, the inside of his arms. And also the little grenades which we've done in the same olive drab. I call them grenades, that's exactly what they look like, I presume they are. Now we're moving on to Citadel Nuln Oil. And this is only to do the sections that we've got lead belcher on. Apologise if you can hear any noise in the background when I'm talking, I've got a little cat who is... Trying to savage my hand while I'm recording here. The final shade is going to be Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use this on all of the gold. As I've been painting these Necromunda miniatures re recently, I have just been doing the bases as I go along rather than giving a tutorial for the bases. If you do like to look at the bases and you'd like a quick tutorial on them, just let me know in the comments. I'll get one of them up because it shouldn't take too long to do. Now we're going to add Citadel Drucci Violet, which is the final shade. This is going to be a tiny little spot on each of the sections of red. Like so. Okay, so now we're just going to do a couple of little buttons on the back of the shield to give it a bit of colour. The first colour we're using is Citadel Mephist on red. So we're just going to do all the square buttons on the back of the shield. Now with shields like this, I wouldn't expect them to be very high tech and have too much on them, so we are going to give the back of them a really basic paint job because it's more of a functional thing than anything fancy. So we're going to use Vallejo German Cam Bright Green, or if you've got a Citadel Bright Green, that would work just as good, just to paint the round disc buttons on the back. That's what I'm calling them. I have absolutely no idea what they are, but they look nice and green. Like so. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm just going to paint the two little wires 
just above the buttons. Got two little tubes, we're just painting them silver to help break up that black on the back there. Next up, we're going back to the Retributor armor. Now when we're reapplying this, you want to be thinking about where the light's catching the shield. So each one of these guys' shields is at a slightly different angle, so the shading is all going to be slightly different on each one that you do. So we're going to put a lot of the Retributor armor back on, but you want to make sure that the main sections of it, which are highlighted, are the bits that are going to catch the light the most. Doesn't matter too much with this layer, because this is just getting the base gold back on. You also want to make sure you leave some of that Agrax air shade in the recesses, just so you get that dirty, grimy look about it. Next colour we're using is Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to use that to start the highlights on the gold. So this is where you really want to be going for the areas that are going to catch the most light. So on any upward facing edges, areas where the light's going to catch it more. So generally where you've got it the original gold next to a ridge or on the underside you're not going to put that much liberator gold on it now we're going to add some Vallejo model air chrome to the previous liberator gold just to lighten that up and now we're going to do one final highlight just around the edges around some of the ridges and the nooks that are on his armour. You notice where he's been cut from the sprue on his shoulder pads, there is some quite big dents there. Um, the clipping off seems to have gone wrong, but I've highlighted them as though it's just damage to the shoulder pad. It looks pretty good when it's done anyway. Now we're going back to Citadel Wire Flesh. We're going to start painting up his armour. I'm going to paint the armour in a slightly different way to how I'm doing the pouches and also I think his gloves as well. Using slightly different mixes just so they look that little bit different. As always, you want to be painting this as though it's mainly the areas that are going to be catching the light and getting this base colour back on so you're leaving quite a little bit of the shade in the recesses where the light wouldn't be hitting too much. Now we're going to add some Vallejo white to the wire flesh just lighten that up a little bit and start with the first layer of highlights You can see here the highlights are going on the upper sides of all the armour or the areas that are going to be catching the most light. If the light was coming from directly above. You can see where I've highlighted there. The different areas and how I reckon the light would catch them. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm going to do one final highlight on the armour plate. Really did like these miniatures. The uh, subjugators have still got another four to paint, I think. We've got another five enforcers to paint. I'll be doing an enforcer video of the sergeant in the coming weeks. I really did enjoy painting them up. They're great models and you've got a ton of detail on them. Now I'm going to go back to wire flesh again. I'm going to start working on those pouches. There is a lot of detail on the pouches, little creases and little ridges running down them. So it's worth taking a little bit of time just so that you can get the paint on them in the right places and get them looking nice. 
Also, with it being smack bang in the middle of his chest, they're a bit more front and centre, so you do want them to look good. Now, we've added a little bit of Scarsnick Green from Citadel to the wire flesh just to lighten it up a little bit. And this just gives it a slightly different colour to the armour plate. So, the low, they may have been once the same green. Ages maybe faded them. Or they just got that slightly different colour because of the texture of the material or what have you. But just to make them look a little bit different from the armour plates. Like so. Now we're going to add a little bit more Scarsnick Green to the previous mix. And just do one final highlight on those pouches. On this highlight you want to be doing the top edges. The little ridges where the lighter catch, you don't want to be going all over the whole thing with this. Just adding that a little touches to his hands as well. Like so. Now going back to the emblems, I'm going to use Citadel Avaland Sunset once more. Just reapply this. And when I'm applying this, I try and rotate it so that you're getting the brush strokes coming away from the edges where the Seraphim Sepia is. Just so you can kind of drag the paint away and get that a little bit more of a smooth transition. If you do get a nice straight line where you've put the Avaland Sunset too thick around where the Sepia is, you can just get a little bit of Sepia put that back in like I've just done there, put a little bit underneath there as well and smooth that off. Next up we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow, we're just going to highlight the top half of the circle on his shield and then about the bottom quarter or bottom third of the circle on his chest. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black, any black will do for this really, so if you're using Citadel that's fine. I'm just going to start doing the icons on his chest and on his shield. Now you can do a rough sketch of these with pencil before you paint them in if you want. I'm just going for freehand so you can tell when they're finished they're ever so slightly different. <laughs> but I prefer to try and do it in freehand just because it's, it's a good way to practice. So. If you get one wrong, you don't like the look of it, just go over the colours again and restart the emblems. Now we're going to the Citadel and the Fist on Red once more. We're just going to start working on the highlights, with these little bits on his helm. Now for a lot of the detail work here, I'm using a Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush, because I really like the points on this, I've been using this one for months now. Um, so whenever I've used it in a video, probably about the past year or so, it's been that brush. Now we're adding a little bit of Citadel Fire Dragon Bright to the fist on Red, just to lighten that, and we're just going to do one highlight on this little red trim. Ordinarily I'd do two highlights on it, but because it's such a small area, I didn't see the point in spending too much time on it. Because it will be used for gaming on a tabletop. There's always a mountain of figures to paint. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Olive Drab, and we're going to start working on those straps again. So with the straps, they all tend to have a little kind of concave area. So where the concave, I try and do the edges of the raised edges of the concave with the olive drab again. And then where it sort of smooths out 
like where it's flat against the back of his armor plates and things like that. I tend to do the, the whole section of that painted with the olive drab. I just added a little bit of white to the olive drab just to lighten that up a little bit. I'm just going to do one highlight on the straps. So as usual, this is going to be the parts that are going to be catching the light most. So on any little ridges or upper edges of the straps. I don't know if you had a look at the Dark Uprising box for Necromunda or if you have thought about playing the game, but the box itself is really, really cool. The zone metallic scenery that you get with it. And the different gangs, the enforcers and subjugators, and the death cults are really, really good. So it's definitely worth a look if you're thinking of getting into the game. Next up, we're going to use a little tiny bit of Araman blue just to paint his lenses. When you're putting these on, you just want to make sure that you're leaving a little tiny bit of the Drachenhof nightshade around the edge of each lens. I've added a little bit of white to the Araman blue, and we're now just going to do a highlight to each lens. Now I'm doing the highlight to the front of the lenses here, because I expect that the helm will be slightly more covered, or the helm would cover the lens slightly more towards the back of the lenses, I should say. So I'm doing the highlight towards the front of the lens. I'm just going to mix a little bit of white with the previous mix and give them one more highlight. So this is pretty much pure white. There's only a tiny little bit of Araman blue left in it. I'm just going to give one final highlight to each lens. Trying to get like a little spot or a little line on there. Now what we've done here is using a little bit of white mixed with McCrag blue we are just going to highlight the lens here now there is a mist layer here and um, you really want to do another layer of McCrag blue over where you put the Drachenhof nightshade making sure there's a bit of Drachenhof nightshade left around the edges and then start this layer here I'm not too sure what happens to the footage of the McCrag blue being added but there you go So the idea with these highlights is I'm trying to replicate as though it's picking up the light that's going above him. So I added more white to the McCrag blue mix there. There's other strip lights above him in the corridors of Necromunda. And that, that is what is being reflected on the visor on his helm. Also on the panels of his shield there on the back. I'm doing a reflection of the same light bulb that's on his visor and also a little reflection of his eyes. While on the front I'm going to be trying to do as a light from the front of his shield where the two torches are is shining onto the ground and illuminating the edges and the patterns on the ground there. So now we've added a little bit more white to the previous mix and we're going to give that another highlight. So this light bit here is where the light is catching something on the floor or maybe there's an illumination of some sort on the floor itself. And here you can see the same kind of ladder type pattern that you've got on his base, as though that's stretching away from him on the floor. And then we're doing the two lines for his eyes and also the highlight as though the lamp above him is on his shield too. Now for the next clip, we've actually coloured in the two lamps on the front of his shield with white. We're just going to use a little tiny bit of Lamenta's yellow glaze. We could use maybe a contrast or Cassandora yellow shade, something like that, just to give them a bit of a yellow tint and a little lamp behind his head there. You don't want to make them too yellow just so it's got a little hint of yellow about them. And now we're going to use a little bit more white just to lightly go over the top of the center of those lamps 
So around the middle area where it's going to be the brightest, you want to add a little, a little tiny bit of white on there. Like so. Now we're going to start working on his armour and his shield. So we're going with Vallejo Black. We're just going to reapply all the black to get rid of any little paint spots we may have got on there earlier from any of the previous layers. This is where you can really tidy up, sort of like round where you've got the Necromunda badge or where you've been doing the green armour or anything like that. You can just tidy it up with the black and then we can start working on the black itself. Come back once all that's finished and we'll start on the next layer. Now we're using a little bit of German grey from Vallejo. We're going to be highlighting all the areas of the black which will be catching the light. On this we're also only highlighting the areas of black which is on his shield and on his armour plates as well. And on his boots. Also on his grenade launcher because the cloth of his jacket we're going to be doing with a blue tint to it. So this is only for, as I say, the shield, the armour, his gun and his boots. When I say armour, I also mean his helm as well. Next up is Mechanicus Standard Grey from Citadel. I'm going to use this to highlight a lot of the edges just and the little bolts just to make them stand out. I'm going to be highlighting the edges which will be catching the light. You don't want to be highlighting all of them. It just makes it all look a bit too... I don't know, a bit too much if you highlight every single edge with it. I don't think it looks quite as good. If that is how you want to paint it though, just do exactly the same as you're doing now, but highlight every edge with the Mechanicus Standard Grey. So next up, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black and add a little bit of Citadel Calador Sky to it. And this is what we're going to be doing his coat and his trousers in. And this is just to give the black clothing that hint of blue look the Dread and all the judges used to have on their clothes. So it looked like it was black, but then you'd have this kind of dark blue hint to it. So you're going to be applying this to the clothing between the straps, above the straps and the bottom part of his coat and also on his arms. We're going to add a little bit more Calador Sky to that and do a nice highlight on the clothing. I'm going to be trying to do this on the raised areas or where there's any ridges in the cloth. I'll just make that stand out a little bit and look like it's catching the light. I'm going to add a little bit more Calador Sky to it once more. I'm just going to do that one final highlight, highlighting smaller areas than we've just done. That just gives us that nice tint that we want on his clothing. You can really see that blue coming through now with the final highlight. It still looks dark enough to look black. Like so. And that is the finished subjugator. We always had a spray with matte varnish. I've used gloss varnish on the visor and the viewing screens on a shield. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.